Hello. Glad you found me here. I want to tell you this is a remastered copy of a previous video I made for other channels. The problem is is that the news reports and the music that was in the original and some other things I found could not be presented on YouTube. However, this disclaimer remains. This video is for entertainment and food for thought only. If there is found any likeness to real people or events happening in this world, well, so be it. And there you have it. Matthew 24, verses 21 through 23, uh, explain to us this in the English Standard Translation. For then there will be great tribulation such as never been from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. Famous verses from Ephesians 6.12, from the ESV, I think it's 6.12 and 13, where we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Wherefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in that evil day, and having done all, to stand. I have to start this this video with a, uh, a very deep question, one that many people may not have ever considered before, although I'm thinking that I'm finding some theologians are really starting to come along and talk about my point of view. Not that my point of view is good or bad or might be or might not be, but again, it's an entertaining point of view. How does anyone, to ask the question, totally destroy what is indestructible? How do they drown something that does not need the breath of air? Or even starve something that does not eat? Well, the answer to that we will discuss a little later towards the end of this video. And I hope you stay around long enough to get a good understanding of why that question must be asked. For many years now, I have tried to find the answer to the question, um, learned a long, long time ago, that, you know, you, you want to get to the bottom of a crime, all you got to do is follow the money trail. But I couldn't find the answer to the question of what economy drives some people to want and work so hard to develop a single new one world government. It's like asking who will pay them money or taxes when no one is working. Well, I could find no answer when following that money trail, but I kept trying. But then I heard that part where the New World Order wants to get rid of carbon dioxide. It, carbon dioxide what they call a pollutant in Earth's atmosphere. Eureka. Therein lies that answer. You might go, huh? Might it be that they want no carbon atmosphere at all so that all carbon-based living beings just melt away? After all, humans are carbon-based themselves, and carbon passes through us and rejuvenates our body, our body's own carbon, 
as it's going through, as it's passing through. We breathe it in, we breathe it out. It's a little small thing. It's a small thing, they say. Well, they, whoever they are, I believe they want to make Earth just like Mars. A pure planet, desert, with no intelligent signs of life in it. And I believe, furthermore, that this is all part of the war against God, our Creator. As human descendants, we have been made in God's image. The genetic sons and daughters of Adam through Noah and on down. And we are right here in the middle of the war against Father God, the Most High. Whether we like that or not, we're here. The fact of the matter is that many of the days, days, could live on Mars. But Mars is just too far away for a simple vacation trip. And Disney hasn't built anything there yet. They want to do away with cars, trucks, transport vehicles, coal-fired generation plants, your gas stove, air conditioning, refrigeration, all these things that help us to live on this planet. And why? The reason for that, I believe, is that because all the fuels and things that we are using in this world, except for maybe nuclear power and air and solar power, transpose into CO2. They consider CO2 as a pollutant, something that must be gotten rid of. What? Why? The reason is because plants and trees and other living things in the ocean feed on CO2 and expel a human breathable oxygen. The New World Order also wants to get rid of CO2 entirely as well as control all the farming, ranching, all, farms of, all, all forms of food processing and agriculture. You see, they want humankind to be withered down into numbers that could not possibly sustain themselves. So that all of us, made in the image of God, will die. And many of those will choose to depart from the faith, thinking they'll be able to live. Oh, well. But the book says, now the spirit, the spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and the teaching of demons. From 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 of the ESV. Why would they want to do all this, all this stuff? Why would they want to basically destroy all forms of life on this planet? Why would they want to make it like Mars? We'll get into that. First off, we'll read some of the evidence that uh, the New World Order people uh, want to shove down your throat. As according to the uh, Center for, Fi for Science Education, and I quote, CO2 traps heat in the atmosphere, causing global warming. End quote. That's all I gotta say. It causes global warming. Everybody gets global warming. Oh, we don't want global warming. But if you was to read down a little bit on the same page, and a little further, this will be found. Quote, Photosynthesis the biochemical process by which plants and some microbes create food uses up carbon dioxide. Photosynthetic organisms combine CO2 and water, H2O, 
to produce carbohydrates, which they use as food. And sugars, get back into the quote, and they emit oxygen as a byproduct. Places such as forests and areas of the ocean that support photosynthetic microbes, therefore, act as massive carbon sinks, removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere via photosynthesis. Earth's early atmosphere had much higher CO2 levels and almost no oxygen. This is still according to the, uh, yeah, yeah. And the rise of photosynthetic organisms led to an increase in oxygen, which enabled the development of oxygen-breathing creatures such as us. End quote. The bays want you to believe the first part of that text, but all the while they're hoping that your eyes will grow tired and you skip past the later part. And so the theys want to dis want to uh, construct big uh, scrubber machines and and pipelines and large containers to suck up and remove the CO2 from the planet, as well as kill all the trees and destroy all the farming and agriculture and get rid of the cows. And they want to put all that carbon dioxide in big tanks under the ocean. Well, okay, I don't know if that last part is true or not, but. It would seem that. Even though the real truth is that all that is needed is more grass, more plants, more trees, more ranching, more farming, more cows, more agriculture. You see, they are oxymoronic, you like that word, in whatever endeavors they choose. But they don't care. This is why they're politicians. They only want to control us. And who are they, anyway? Well, I can tell you this. There are two basic groups of theys. One being a very duped group. They that serve the other group of theys. We'll take a look at the first ones. The first theys mentioned here in are your world leaders, politicians, and those that are working towards new world order, trying to get rid of CO2. The Bill Gateses, the, uh, all of the people in the WEF, etc., etc., right on down to your senators and congressmen. Yeah, here's the interesting part. Because I was saying, the first days mentioned are your world leaders and politicians. These are a duped group that think they are smart and will rule over the remaining humans when the battle is over. But the reality is, is that the other days will not allow that. Instead, the second days mentioned here have a plan to crush the days that are the politicians of this world as soon as the theys, that are the politicians of this world, have outgrown their usefulness. Thus they are leaving the other theys to rule over, the second set of theys, to rule over anything that might be still remaining on earth. But I tell you truly, God will not allow his image to be wiped clean in this action. He created this world for us. Okay? Now, as Jesus said in Matthew 24, verses 21 through 23, he says, For then will be great tribulation, such has not been from the beginning of the world until now, no, and never will be. And if those days had not been cut, Short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Now, this is the word of Jesus. But then if anyone asks or says to you, look, 
here is the Christ, or there he is. Do not believe it. So that plan of killing us all, well, it ain't going to happen. Because it's already been determined, those days will be cut short. So it ain't going to happen. But the spirit, days, they don't know that yet. They haven't got that part of the Bible figured out. These spirits of the evil dimension are getting more and more active right now around us and trying to carry out the spirit they's plan. Period. The other they's that are behind or in the world leaders behind or in the world leaders and politicians are making promises that they will never hold up. The spirit days are the spirits of the evil dimensions, such as the one that we call, refer to as uh, Satan and Samzaziel and Osmodial and others that are spirits and such do not require air to breathe. Neither do they eat nor drink to survive. And these are not carbon-based either. And as the spirit days look forward to the day that they will no longer have to deal with us humans. That's what they think. The sons and the daughters of Avon, living, breathing, eating, creations of God the Most High. Well, God, the Father God, the Most High has a different plan even from the beginning. Now, remember the question, though, back at the beginning of the video, now that I've, I've, I've shown you this far. I've got you this far. Hang in there. I'll repeat it. I'll repeat that question so you can bring it up to the top of your head. How does anyone destroy the indestructible? Or drown something that does not breathe? Or starve that which does not eat? You see, again... The evil days that are evil once were fathered by fallen angels who took women of mankind and had produced Nephilim, or giant children. And these giant children grew up to become the eaters of mankind. Yeah. Then, when the Nephilim would die or be killed, their spirit stayed on earth to cause trouble for humankind. There's a reason for that. This was decreed by Father God, the Most High, because the Nephilim were unintended beings that never should have happened. Some, fallen, some, some spirits are fallen angels that have yet to be sentenced even though they have turned to all manner of evil deeds. And these things are being held actively here on earth. In other words, they're still around us until the great day of the judgment of our Lord. Our place is to figure out what they're up to so we can avoid conflict with them. Now, as we said, and keep saying, angels are indestructible as far as mankind's ability, as they were made to be also eternal beings. Angels do not need to breathe air, and they do not eat. Even when Jesus suddenly appeared to his own disciples after the crucifixion, the disciples were afraid that this might be a phantasma, or an evil spirit. But Jesus quickly put them at ease, as follows. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of honeycomb. That was from Luke 24, 40 through 42 in the King James Version. Thus they knew at that time 
when he ate, they knew it was not any Tantachma, but it was Jesus. Now, we may be able to understand from what I've presented so far that angels and spirits do not eat, drink, and require air to breathe. Angels who were loose may have easily supply, you know, survived the Great Flood. And these survivors may have come back on land to repeat what others had done before them. So let's take a look back at the flood event for just a moment here, real quick. Okay, because this reads... In Genesis 6, 4 through 6, or through 6, 7, in the King James Version, it says that there were ancients, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children unto them, the same become mighty men of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of men was great upon the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man who have I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. It repenteth me that I have made them. And then in Genesis 7, it says that all flesh died, all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and cattle and beast, and every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man. All in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died. Every living substance was destroyed that was upon the face of the ground, both man and camel, cattle and creepy things, and the fowl of heaven, as they were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah remained alive, and they that were with him on the ark. That was Genesis seven twenty-one through 23. Huh. Do you hear anything about any angels? Do you hear anything about any spirits? Now, I'm, I'm sure that if there were living, breathing, eating, nephilim when the flood came along, I'm pretty sure that they would have died. I mean, after all, how, how long could they hold water? How long could they hold their breath? You know, sooner or later, they would drop out. Now we just have a, their spirit left, but they're not in the same body. So they would have died at that point, died off. I believe that's kind of what the Bible is saying. But the evil spirits of the Nephilim, and now after the, after the flood, we also have the Rephaim as spirits. And they also were indestructible as far as humans are concerned. And this is why we, even today, under the, under the Lord Jesus Christ and in the direction of the Holy Ghost, are able to cast evil spirits or demons out of a suffering and needy Christian. Even so, we cannot kill a spirit. We can only cast them out from a willing person. Make them leave. Make them leave their house. Make them leave their body. Make them leave them alone. And it's God, Jesus, through the Holy Ghost that does that does all the work, or he sends angels to do the work in some cases. Such spirits, though, they can walk through solid walls and certain dimensional barriers. They can shape shift in all directions, and as spirits, they do not need to breathe. They do not need food or water. So now that brings us back to the question. How does anyone totally destroy that which is indestructible as far as humankind is concerned? Or drown something that does not need air? 
or starve something that does not eat? The answer is simple. The answer is that which has been put aside until the end, the lake of fire. As found in Revelation, uh, let me get back to the number here, Revelation 19.20, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had not received the mark of the beast, or that had received the mark of the beast, my apology, and them that worship the image of the beast, these both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Revelation 20.10, And the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Revelation 20.14 And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Revelation 20.15 And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And whosoever was not written, was not found written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. Now, I would reckon here, just a personal point of view, like most of us, that only the living creations of God might be found in the book of life. Now, you know, there's always that question, can you be written out of the book of life? I'm, I don't know. That's not for me to know. That's above my pay grade. But I do believe that only the creations of God, living, breathing creations of God, might be found in the book of life. Now, as angels, being eternal beings, would they be considered living beings just as humans are living beings? I'm not sure there either. Humans were created by God, and in life we have a physical mind and a body and a soul that is of God, made in the very image of God. And all of that returns to God at the time of judgment. But the souls of the Nephilim are unintended spirits that have not a soul, even though they had a form of life once, but no longer live, but yet are spirits waiting to be judged. As to any other souls or spirits of old that remain on earth, at least after the, the first uh, earthly visit of Christ Jesus and the resultant spread of the gospel, they will be judged at the day, on the day of our Lord. And just to be clear, I believe that all of the above mankind that was not picked out of this world by Jesus and his angels at and during his first, at, towards the end of his first coming, when he went into hell, I believe they will, everything that remained in hell will face judgment as well. I have a tendency to think that Jesus opened those gates and let some of the saints out of hell during that time. I think that's, I think that's why they were seen wandering around Jerusalem, the, uh, the saints of old, recognizably, because they came up out of the, out of the, the crypts, out, out, out of the, uh, the tombs. But to get back to it, everything that will be found guilty in that day of the Lord's judgment, then they, they, too, will be cast in the lake of fire 
that doesn't matter whether, as far as I'm concerned, that will not matter whether you're a they of the first kind or you're a they of the second kind or you're just plain old-fashioned they. Each and every one of us, I believe, will face the judge. And Jesus the Christ is that judge. At that time, will the Lord say to you, I never knew you. Now I know that I will be judged even for what I have produced here. And I'm sure there is some error in it. And I will be judged for probably some other unconfessed matters as well. I can only pray that Jesus knows my heart and intentions and remembers just how short a memory he has given me in old age. Because even though I have tried and tried and tried to confess everything as it comes to mind, I'm sure there's some things I've forgotten about. But what about you? Will we see each other at the wedding? I have not already. This certainly is the time now to place your mind, your heart, and your body in the hands of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, so that the Holy Ghost may work perfect in you and keep you safe until the day he returns. This I pray for all who will receive it, all for the namesake of the Father, and of the Son, and in the unity of the Holy Ghost. Amen.